Kings and Queens, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. It is time for our annual interview. I got my best friend and co-host, Polly. How are you doing today, Polly? Good to see you. And we got you. the man himself, Matthew Cote, from a remote secret location. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, it was fun getting to the remote secret location. It's my most private, comfortable place. So, yeah, I will leave it at that. Oh man, I'm, I'm excited spooky. about this. It's perfect for this season. Yeah, that's true. And you got the attire to go along with it. Got the got the spooky yeah. tie, looking sharp. I I'm excited. Every year we've done this. I rewatched the first one, and the comments were right. We were both very shy and nervous. The second wow. one, you know, we got, we got around to it. I got a little bit fatter, and now I am at. At the fattest I've been. There we are. Same. <laughs> but we're yeah. a lot more comfortable. And now I can ask Matthew anything. Anything at all. Without being shy. Yeah. And then I won't answer. But that's okay. That's <laughs> sort of how we roll. Yeah, that was at uh, New York City Comic Con, which is actually on right now. Yeah, right as now. As we're recording that's this. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, was, I missed uh, that. that. Was, yeah, that New York was City something. Comic Con right? was really cool to do. Yeah, a lot of good memories. Oh, and you had Stranger Things as well. I remember DVD Mobile launch. It's ages ago. It's crazy. Yeah, I feel you know, like that, that kind of leads right into a question right there, King. Oh. <laughs> Stranger I mean, Things, yeah. you say, huh? Yeah, Stranger huh. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polly, you take it away. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the people really want to know about this one. Um, you probably can't say anything. But, yeah, you know. you know, there has been a lot of discussion about who follows who on Twitter and is following yeah. who on Twitter again between Netflix and did, did Dead someone by Daylight. Me? Uh, there, there were some people who say that Netflix stopped following Dead by Daylight and are following them again. And there is a suspicion that perhaps the, the return of Stranger Things may be coming to Dead by Daylight. Let me put it like that. If there is a return, or if there was, hypothetically, following each other on Twitter would not be the way we tease or announce it. Fair enough. Polly, listen, man, we, you, you caught him out that years ago kind of doing a, that the first time. <laughs> I mean, it's five, never years ago, again. five years ago would have been a different story, but... Today, we actually have a PR and a communications and a brand department. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they have better ideas than <laughs> getting to follow and unfollow and then follow again. Although, it, that's not my expertise. I'll leave them at that. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that's all speculative stuff. Let, let's talk about what's actually in the game. You know, uh, yes, please. Wesker, Resident Evil is huge. It's the return of Resident Evil into DPT. Obviously, it was there, but it came back again. Uh, and now, obviously, it seems you guys have a really nice uh, relationship with them. You're getting so much different skins. You're having the ability to bring in these new legendary skins. We even yeah. seen recently you guys announced these uh, blighted skins for these characters, which is your own interpretation. Like, just talk to me about the relationship, you know, uh, bringing in Wesker, how that all go down, because it seems like it's going really well. Well, I mean, yes, it is going really well. It's and it's it's really fun uh, because, I mean, it's it's a giant we're talking about here, and mm. they are a, a giant of of the video game world and the horror world. And I mean, if anything, behavior we've been making games. We just celebrated our thirtieth anniversary, and one of the things that we've done really really well over these 30 years is take other people's licenses and and intellectual properties and create content with them treating them with respect and honoring them in the way we know how to make games so this for us was something we knew we could do like we've done that in the past for years with whether it's like disney uh, you know, we've made games for Brave and we've made games for a lot of different licenses throughout the years. I've worked on a few of them myself with SpongeBob and with this and that and 
TV shows, didn't matter. Behavior was always ready to do anything. And we were able to jump into people's universes and treat their creations with respect. And it showed in how we did the first Resident Evil chapter. And obviously, with the relationship going well and, and the trust being built, it's okay for us to go, hey, by the way, you know, we have this idea. Do you want to see it? Like, is it okay for us to, just, you know, show you some ideas that we have? And then they, they're like, oh, that's interesting. And that sort of fits in well with the fiction and the, the whatever multiverse version of their characters is being shown in the Dead by Daylight world. So, yeah, it's it's really really fun when things and and it's not always just a matter of trust and, and a good relationship sometimes also it's the license is able or not to accommodate these original creations uh, we have an ex some extremely good relationships with some other of our licensors but they're just unable to allow any deviation from the source material and that's okay mm. too well put, well put. That's interesting. I, I really do like those blighted skins as well. I'm, I'm happy that that, you know, is there that you guys can kind of do your own thing with these iconic and unique creations and bring it in and still have it so well suited, you know? Yeah, that was kind of cool. The first few blighted skins that we did, we like, it, like so many things in DVD, like we had no idea that that one thing would take off and become its mm. own thing and become such an an iconic uh, thing in Dead by Daylight. Now the blighted skins are something that people expect all the time and like we're, yeah. we're getting more of them and then if licensed ones happen, it's sort of a big deal and it's, yeah, it's Dude, yeah. really, really cool. And it's such a a cool look that you can, you can make endless variations of it you could technically redo blighted versions of already blighted characters and do some slightly different versions and it would still be cool i think uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really iconic look it's nice it's to see good. that resident evil was on board for doing them with first nemesis yeah. oh, and yeah. now wesker too yeah yeah they're really cool yeah. like that but then again i guess we earned it <laughs> fair enough so um for the Resident Evil, the, this newest chapter, we see a lot of the characters finding their voice with all of these new additions and all these voice lines in the lobby. Um, so how has that gone? Would do you think that's successful? I do want to say that I like that we only hear our own character's voice. So that if you don't, <laughs> you have a group of four, they yeah. aren't all talking over all each talking. other, getting in their dialogue. You only hear whoever you have that has a voice line but uh are you happy oh, you with like that oh yeah i like i like okay, that are you, are you happy I, about that. I have seen some people who say they wish they had an option to turn it off so i don't know if that's something that you would consider in the future like turn um, your own voice off yes yes yeah. hmm. so um how do you feel about it? Is this something that has made you decide you want to go back and explore other existing characters and give them voice lines? I mean, it's funny because the the producer in me, who's not in practicing anymore, but still very present, I it, it scares me because we were so comfortable with having just grunts and you know <laughs> heavy breathing and a scream here or there localization is a is is a dream and it it makes everything so much simpler and then the first ever voice we put in the game obviously you remember it's Mr. Bruce Gamble the first spoken word we had yeah. and uh, and it opened up a whole realm of possibility. And of course it makes for some really cool character, you know, depth, but it's, it's a lot of work and it's scary because it's difficult. And you have to cast the uh, casting an actor for a voice is not the same as casting an actor for a grunt. Right. The Wesker, uh, so, the Wesker fellas well, is it. amazing by the way. So I know he's not from, the original game that he's somebody that was hired on specifically to voice Wesker, but he's amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's it. And and sometimes in in the past, let's say we we find a, an actor that we like for a voice for an established character and the licenses might go, yeah, no. That 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 doesn't work for us. And and so it adds another layer of complexity to all of these things that we're trying to deliver. That being said, it is really really cool and it's a, an extra layer of, of detail in the character it's like adding mm. i don't know like new animations or vfx or something like it's it's really more depth of us giving you that character and and one of the things that we like to do is licenses is give you as much authenticity in the character as we can like we really give you the fantasy of of incarnating a character that you know and love so of mm. course that helps immensely so probably a balance too of uh adding to the immersion or just like okay we get it when you hear the lines over and over again yeah. no. yeah. i'm gonna nerd yeah, out on you too the, the plague is the first one with spoken word but you know my babylonian <laughs> and or yeah, akkadian yeah, yeah, is a little rusty right. so i don't know yeah. what she's saying <laughs> you're 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 right those were it's all the it's all the jeopardy words. questions he's been working on <laughs> he's like oh no i know it's true huh? i gotta be careful no, actually man. i don't i have to be very casual around you you're you're <laughs> here to keep me true <laughs> No, it's really cool seeing those voice lines coming in as well. And I remember, like, the first time we ever spoke, I think we, um, we, I think maybe we did have Bruce in the game at that point, or maybe not, but it was when Stranger Things came out, and, um, I was asking if we were going to get voice lines for Nancy and Steve, and I remember you were saying, like, it could be such a pain in the ass because of the, um, <laughs> actors union yeah. and all of that stuff, and, you know, going into more, True. and, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just happy we have the voice lines. And in fact, like last time as well, you know, now I think about voice lines, we didn't even have Pinhead voice lines when we spoke to you last time. It was out from the no. PTV. And we were like, are yeah, they coming back? Mystery. And you're like, mm, there was a mystery <laughs> swirling around that. We were like, what's happening? Yeah. We had a voice and then we lost a voice and then we got a voice. And finally, you know, we've got what we all wanted. So, yeah, it was that one was a an uncomfortable series of event. To, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad it got sure. resolved. Positively. Uh, so you guys also recently announced the probably biggest Halloween event to date. I mean, it, it seems cool? like it's so cool. It seems like everything is in this one, like everything from the past, and then some is here. We got pumpkins. We got this new collecting energy cycle. Not to mention the more blighted skins we got ghost face mask coming in the new tell that what's our face you know oh <laughs> uh, it's so good uh walk me through all of this i mean i don't even know where to start to digest all of this stuff because there's just so much it's so good and how did this come to fruition what are your thoughts on it i just want to hear it all i think it kind of boils down to we're getting better at this <laughs> The, the, <laughs> yeah. and, and honestly i was looking at the the, the loadout of that event Mm. I got surprised by a couple of things. Like I wasn't aware of everybody that was working on every single piece. So there's quite a lot. But the, the the thing is, over the years we've realized. I mean, Halloween is our biggest event of the year. There's no two right. ways about it. We we do celebrate a few other things, but Halloween is Halloween. You, you gotta really yep. pull all the stops and and really do something amazing and every time we sort of try to outdo ourselves and we try a few things and sometimes it's harder than others and this time it seems it just sort of all came together i mean we'll 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 see afterwards hindsight's always 2020 but it's really really cool to see just everything you know happening and finally coming together and being able to reveal that to people and I think it was a great surprise. I just watched a lot of people, even just their reactions, like when we posted that little uh, trailer on, on Twitter and, and other platforms, like people mm. were going nuts. <laughs> and it felt good. It felt good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me it looks included, like you really I have so excited. Man, go ahead, Bob. I mean, the anniversary yeah. was cool and all, but it's it's Halloween. We all know. Plus, it's yeah, my birthday. Sure. That's that's probably why. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, yeah. So people are really excited for the 
Halloween event and Ghostface. I have seen some people say that they wish that since it's Halloween and we're coming up to, you know, Halloween ends movie, that there was some content related to Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. And you and I have talked about this before. You've explained to us that the license is purely tied to the first movie and you can't go any further than that. So, you know, barring something that we don't know about, as far as I know, you can't get mature Laurie, mature yeah. Myers. But I will that is- say that Dr. Sam Loomis does appear in the first film <laughs> and we have the ability now to make legendary skins that you know change gender we've seen it with james sunderland and cheryl mason so that one in my mind should be on the board and available so what do you think about that yeah i gotta take some notes here <laughs> <laughs> You're right. He's in the film. You, you should be correct. able to get him. You I know a lot of people would correct. like him. I mean, it's certainly not a given, but uh, it's not impossible. Okay, pass. We'll move on. <laughs> Good <laughs> idea. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll come back to this next year, and we'll be like. I mean, they are our, our longest standing uh, partners. Yeah, I mean we've true. been we've been in that relationship for almost six years now, so yeah, yeah. maybe something there. All That'd right, cool. well, if I put a B in your bonnet on that one, I'll be very happy to see it come to fruition. <laughs> if anything come back develops. next year, and we'll see. What are you talking about <laughs> bees all of a sudden? Is there something <laughs> you're to say here? Hey, you're the one who went to the candy store before we went to dinner, <laughs> so you want to talk about who's trolling who? Oh, he's like, this candy's so good, guys. It's so delicious. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what? I, I bought so much. All the Laffy Taffy. Yeah. So good. Oh man. Uh, speaking of last time. So last time, one year from that, we'll come back to this and we'll see where it stands. But last year, uh, the big thing that you were talking about was getting DBD's original characters into some other games. And you said he had some things yeah. in mind. And this was before um, we knew about anything. Obviously, yeah. you guys went into For Honor. You had a huge Halloween event there, which was awesome. Um, it was kind mm. of beautiful what they did with that. There's mm. some really nice stuff in that game. Oh, I didn't yeah, get a it, chance, but I heard some people that they said they thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, it was really good. Well, it was b- between good. you and me, uh, and and all of your viewers, <laughs> I'm I'm okay if you say you were too busy playing Dead by Daylight to go check it out. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'll go on record saying I'm fine. With it. <laughs> I I I I. Went and checked some things out. It was good. They did a really well adaptation of getting the Dead by Daylight style game mode to work in their game. Yep. It was very nice to see like all the cosmetics that work so well too, and everything just kind of yeah. like molded well together. And recently, you guys also announced that you guys are going to be working with PUBG for a Halloween event, which is really awesome. Uh, so how how does that make you feel? You know, you set your mind to this last year. You spoke about getting into other games, and here we are. We got two major games where DVD is now taking place in. What's next? What's running through your mind? How are you feeling about it all? It's funny because when I talk to you like that, uh, like I spend most of my days working in 2023 and 2024. Like that's mm. that's what I do all day. So it's always weird to talk about stuff that's happening right now when I feel like this is something that I was handling a year ago, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but You're let's say in the that, future. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, but but to get back to that, putting Dead by Daylight in other games was a huge deal. And doing the thing in For Honor was, was a big step for us. I mean, it's getting licenses in Dead by Daylight is awesome and it legitimized us uh, especially at the beginning it, it really it, it was really like getting a, a medal or something like that but yeah. having Dead by Daylight be present in other video games it something very different because it means another completely other level of, of relevance and significance in the the, the culture and the, the the 
the now culture of video games and that's that's kind of impressive so yeah it's 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 a big deal and it's really exciting and those conversations uh the conversations that I've had in the past and the ones that I'm handling now uh they're particularly they tickle something very deep in me that make me happy <laughs> fair enough fair enough happy to hear Paul you want to handle any follow ups or the next question I'll go on to the next one um so we've seen the finisher mori in the ptb understandably yeah. it still needs a little bit of work and polish and it isn't coming out in any uh in the next patch anyway we don't know exactly when but still a work in progress so uh a couple questions that i had surrounding the finisher mori and maybe some potential that we could see out of this would we be able to do you have any plans to um up upgrade any of the existing moris you know we've talked about how some of the original moris for trapper hillbilly wraith are a little stale compared to the other ones with the first person yeah. view and do you also see a potential to introduce alternate moris that could possibly mm -hmm. be earned say on the rift or purchased in the shop that you could have you know since every game could potentially end in a mori you could just have a mori selected for your character if you had multiple options it it sounds like a good idea when you put it like that mm. uh, obviously like this is a conversation that I'm, i i'm very careful i don't want to step on any designer's toes for sure uh, they're hard at work making sure that that feature if and when it comes out it makes the game better and not just change it for changing it uh i mean if you if you put yourself back in 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 the mindset you had before the the end game collapse like it changed everything but mm. w was it good the first time we presented it uh, it wasn't perfect and we need this to be amazing now of course you know leading into the conversation about Mori's and and if we're putting a spotlight on Mori's then maybe redoing some of the I mean the the way we were doing things changed immensely since we released you know the trapper the wraith and the hillbilly were the first ones and the Mori's back then had a, a function that is very different from today and also had a flavor that was very very different uh, the first mori that we did that was really more cinematic let's say it was probably the hag and i think mm. of the first 12 killers she's the only one that has a third third person mori yeah i believe i went through and looked at it and all the other killers have uh, first I'll person yeah, yeah, that. but uh but also the, the the action depicted was also a little more a, a little more elaborate and a little more graphic let's say and it immediately sparked the conversation about the older mories and should we redo the trapper you know he's got a bear trap in his hand and he's just sort of mixing <laughs> at you with a stick and you're like could probably do more right uh, well so, we've seen some folks over in southeast asia who have done more <laughs> with the true. trapper mori and so, i think a lot of people are wondering if those might come over well it's the uh, it's there's a lot of conversations around mori's right now happening uh so yeah I'll, I'll unfortunately i have to leave it at that for now but yeah, there are a lot of conversations about Maury's, but you're right. It is a great opportunity for putting your own spin on things. Mm. Fair enough. That'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd I, be I remain interesting hopeful. I've, I've it's also it's personally should. said that I believe that, um, I don't know the statistics, but I believe that killer cosmetics don't sell as well as survivor cosmetics because you can't see them. But if you have games end in finisher mores where killers can see their cosmetics, that That's may a different thing. that yeah, may yeah. Uh, spur on sales of killer cosmetics. You are 
I mean, you are correct in that uh, gut feeling. I, I mean, as much as a gut feeling can be correct, it, it, I'd say a lot of people share your uh, gut feeling. Yeah, in that respect. Like, who knows? You never know how these things right. turn out. But you're right. Having a moment, an end game moment that's intense and that's always there where you can actually mm. see yourself and it's a great moment to, to you know do your little uh, bragging and and show <laughs> showboating is that it yeah showboating yeah yeah. Uh, yeah of course it's it's a great motivator to you know just spend an extra dollar to get that fancy tie Fair enough. I'll Coming stay from the man too. with the fancy tie. The fancy tie, right? Yeah. <laughs> a good one. Yeah. That's so a pretty good one, yeah. But I really like it. And I got it from like this cheap ass little punk store <laughs> I like very, very much. Pretty I funny. just broke my king. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> king, that's coming out of your. Yeah, that's you, you out of my that. You're the one that yeah. set this up. You made him break his tie pin. <laughs> oh. It's a shame. I like this one. It's a little doggy bone. Aww. Matthew's just like, oh, King's Pain? Yeah, well, this one wasn't from the little punk store. It's actually from <laughs> and it was, the and it was solid factory. gold. <laughs> no, the, the, the tie is from a cheap-ass store, but the pin was not. Anyway, I'll figure it out. No, oh, man. Okay. Do go on. Oh, God, this next one. So, spe- <laughs> speaking <laughs> about dog bones, animals, you, you still like those balloon animals, Matthew? <laughs> Last year's tweet of the balloon animals. That was a stupid thing. So I tend to say <laughs> stupid things. I don't know if you've noticed that. I, I ramble on and then I say something mm-hmm. stupid. Fortunately, I've been I've been lucky enough that most of it has been harmless. The, mm. I think the worst thing I I shouldn't repeat it, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't said anything that was outright, you know. <laughs> Well, I, I, I fancy myself a pleasant man, so I'm, I, I don't say anything hostile in mm. anybody. Uh, but yeah, I've said some stupid things, but that's okay. <laughs> Follow okay. up. Yeah. How, how how are your uh, <laughs> your two Simon friends? How are they doing? Well, actually, uh, one of them just passed by to take his dog outside. Mm. Uh, so yeah, they're doing well. Happy. They, I, I keep them close because they are very precious to me. That's awesome to hear. We were just, I was having a chuckle when I wrote that one because I was like, well, he definitely <laughs> made theories on all of these things. So we you know, had to talk about it. Last year we were like, do your friend's name Simon. Is this a hint? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh, oh, I, I was seeing one of my friends uh, the other day and he was reminding me he was at my 15th birthday party. And at my 15th birthday party, there were two Vincents, two Alexes, and two Simons. <laughs> and I kept one Vincent and two Simons. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's, that's good. Oh, man. Paul, you want to grab the next one? Okay. Um, so it seems like the realm beyond from our perspective has slowed down they were just turning out like every mid chapter we were getting refreshed maps yep. new realms were being redone and i don't know that we've had anything this year other than haddonfield come out now my suspicion is that the rpd needed a lot of work and yes. the other realms got tabled because the rpd when uh when it first came out it was like making people's games crash and had a lot of fixing yeah. that needed doing. And now, obviously, you've separated it into two whole maps and reworked that map. But I think what, people what are wondering, by the way, uh, I want to hear. So I get like a little confused which up? one I'm on. So I kind of need to get my bearings at first because I don't like memorize oh, okay, this is east or yeah. west. Mm-hmm. I so I have to kind of figure out where I'm at. Sometimes I still get a little mixed up about what's cut off on which one. But um, yeah, I like that it's smaller, a little more yeah, manageable. Yeah, from a gameplay aspect, it's definitely more yeah. manageable. Like I, I played Resident purist. Evil, so I still knew like what's going on. But yeah. sometimes, like you, you turn the corner in a frantic rush, and like shit, I can't go that way. So it's definitely like mm-hmm. it flows a lot better. Uh, all right, good. I prefer the uh, 
I prefer the gameplay coming before the purity of making the map right exactly mm. how it is in in Resident Evil. But, yeah. um, but uh, so anyway, yeah. To, to to not answer your question, <laughs> uh, maps are so much work. Yeah, I, mm. I they're they're I by imagine. far the most expensive thing that we do, and they're free. Each and every one of them is. Mm. Uh, and that's not part of the question, but it's it's a question I have for for you guys because you are some of the most uh, avid players that we have. But like at some point, we also hit a point of diminishing return because having seventy five different maps means that the four you really like have a lower chance of being played, right? Mm. So there's a lot of discussions about that. Yeah. So when you had five, um, five McMillan, um, yeah. five, five farm, and five yeah. you know, um, junkyards, not, that, not just that, those would come that. out a lot. But two swamps, two uh, forests aren't going to be played as often because of the frequency matter. But, but not just that. It's it's what I mean is that let's say we bring in a new killer mm. it's it's awesome because it's more variety every time you start a game as a survivor you really don't know who you're going to be up against there's so much variety and if you want to play a killer you have all of these options in front of you and it's kind of cool to be able to really pick one that you like and the more we offer the more variety there is and it's just richer for it as opposed to maps where if there are in the end a hundred different maps in Dead by Daylight. I'm not sure that it's better than having 50. And that's got very little to do with your question. A little bit, but not that much. But it's really just, that's one of the conversations that we're having. Because mm -hmm. making a new map is not necessarily making the game better each and every time. Obviously, every new map that we make is awesome because it's brand new and people are excited and we usually bring in some amazing visuals like again the map that came with the artist is one of the most uh, to me it was so beautiful and there's a lot of really cool effects in there i think the the, the dead dog saloon is also really cool like these really mm -hmm. cinematic places that it's fun to be in but the fact that there are so many and you don't necessarily i mean you can sort of pick the map but you don't it's not about that. It's usually just a random location you're put in, and therefore most people have their really favorites, or you go in a map and you go, ah, oh, shit, not that one. And so, <laughs> is it better to have, would it be better to have 25 amazing maps, or to have 75, 25 of which are absolutely amazing, 25 are oh, great, and 25 are okay, you know? I, I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know which one of those two scenarios is better. Yeah, I think people are just hoping that the, when we've seen these maps get spruced up, like you said, with the, how beautiful the Eerie of Crows yeah. looks and Dead Dog, that they want to see that kind of treatment done to the forest and the swamp and, you know, fix those up. Make those look a little better. Yeah. Well, the thing also is we get, we get better. Every time yeah. we make a new map, we learn a, something, a new trick. I think, yeah, Lampkin Lane was the last one, right? And that was, like, by far, in my opinion, yeah. the best. I think that one was the best, hands down, of, like, visually, it was great. Yeah, the, 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 the difference was dramatic. Yeah. Very different. Really yeah. looking, and yeah, because that's literally your, one of your oldest to your newest creation, right? So, yeah. and you could really Definitely. see the, uh, the difference between the two. So hopefully, I mean, like, uh, in the future, some of the other maps getting revisited, like Swamp and things like that. And uh, I think people would really appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they would. And I cannot answer that question. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah. We've got to be a couple cool. that I can't really talk about. Actually, it no, seems like most of them I can't, <laughs> but I'll keep going. <laughs> oh, man. Especially uh, because this is not a an, an official 
like I don't have a seal of approval from PR. I know I, I'm, I know is currently like just gonna get twenty emails from the in the back of her neck are standing on end. What's Maggie <laughs> doing right now? <laughs> She just finished climbing the Kilimanjaro, so yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She was mentioning that. Yeah. So, I really hope with all my heart that right now she's not thinking about me and the stupid things <laughs> I could be saying. Like I just want her to enjoy that moment. <laughs> I'm she sure she is. Oh, that's... And then come back to the aftermath. <laughs> I mean, like what the fuck happened? <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? Why did um... I climb that mountain? I needed to stop Matthew. <laughs> oh man. No, I love Marie. Oh man. Yeah. Um let's see. Our next question here is um has it ever been discussed internally or maybe even planned in the future to bring skins for some of the powers in the game? Like maybe give Victor a little top hat or make Hillbilly's chainsaw yeah. a different color, That's things like that. That's the first one you go to. <laughs> That's the first one I can think of. <laughs> little like, Victor running around with a hat. Uh so the question is, has this ever been discussed? Yes, it has. Mm. Any plans? You That's have your it. answer. Okay. That's it. No, it has been fair discussed. Enough. I'll, I'll right. segue off of that a little bit. Um, in, in the same cosmetics department, last time we, we kind of did this in a yes-no format, and you said it was complicated. <laughs> so I think maybe you, you, you might be able to elaborate a little bit. But the question we had last year was... Uh, would we ever see survivors getting more variations of their accessories, i.e. glasses, backpack, shoes, and um, we asked if that would ever happen, and you're like, it's complicated, so wanted to know if you could elaborate on that a little bit. I can't tell you that it didn't become not complicated. <laughs> Fair. Like, you know as well as I do. Well, no, probably not as well. But you know that the way the characters are separated means that if we want to sell mm -hmm. you a pair of glasses for Dwight, it's a full head. There's no glasses. And then you mix and match with the hat that you like and things like that. So it, it does limit a little bit what sort of mm -hmm. thing we can do because doing 27 different kind of glasses for the same Dwight head might feel cheap uh so yeah but it might feel cheap but but we couldn't sell it for 25 cents because it's still it quite a lot cost, of work right. and, and mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's complicated <laughs> say the least That's yeah not where i thought you were going with that question king i thought you meant items for survivors like i was going to go with this question and oh, say like the well, yeah, like, can yeah. we ever see new items for survivors, like a sledgehammer oh, where survivors yeah, could fair. break their own breakable wall? Or one item that I have proposed would be some kind of a beverage, whether it be a water or an energy drink, and those would have different effects in game. They could choose to consume them at different times. Recover exactly. or well, uh, things like that. I'm, I'm waiting for G Fuel to make an offer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you've got the box. I bought mine. Yeah. I was like, well, I can't. That, I that's pulled out, by the way. I don't know I if know. Uh, if know. Um, that was just for pre-orders. If they have more when it's in stock or what? But yeah, I don't it's have out. the details. But yeah, it's it was a cool thing. But no, I, I'm, I'm kidding. We we wouldn't put G Fuel in there. But yeah, I figured it would <laughs> be like you know a. A generic fog brand, the same way that yeah. feel. <laughs> the um, the survivors have their own like knockoff um, athletic gear that isn't like yeah. Reebok or Nike. It's like some made up brand. Mm -hmm. uh, Pustula it's... Punch. Just throwing that out there. Pustula Punch energy drink. David King's <laughs> <laughs> Uh It's yeah, new items have been. Yeah, it's like new offerings and new items. I'm not exactly sure why it hasn't. It's not a, a direction we've expanded in. Mm. 
I think a sledge for a survivor to break a breakable wall yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, that'd be pretty. But there's there's a couple that have been brought up that that would make a lot of sense and that could add to the game. Uh, I think we're we're a little nervous also about the balancing. Uh, just mm. whenever we add even just perks today, like if, when you add a perk, you have to. Scary. You, it's the the permutations of like this perk in collaboration with someone else using this combination of perks against this killer using those like it becomes yep. insane to test that fortunately that's why we have the ptb that's why we're not gonna let go of the ptb because it's the it's one of the ways that we have to be able to test so many permutations really really quickly mm -hmm. but uh, but it's still a little bit insane. Yeah, there's probably some big brains that are out there going, Paul, you can't do that because if you bring four sledges in, you break these walls, and then you've created <laughs> infinites, and they'll be like, oh, okay, gonna I was going to see Ots and DVD yeah. brought in these sledgehammers. Look at what we can do now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, let's not do that. Be interesting, though, one day to see. And hey, you know, let's combine our two questions. Maybe one day we'll get cosmetics for the... Uh, custom cosmetics for the items you know we already got the uh event ones mm. maybe one day yeah there's a couple his... of really cool ones that's yeah. that's much more likely i'll i'll put it like that oh, that's good and well, we, all, we already seen a couple yeah yeah that'd be pretty cool the flashlights by, with the uh... stencils are really cool that is i think they're cool. my favorite and, uh... yeah you got the uh the broken bulb one as well pretty cool flickering mm. on and off the ghosty yeah. one the i think which one the event one right it has a six on it and i think Pop all the no, i just had the last night of korea <laughs> that was a bad oh, moment man. for flashlight plays <laughs> <laughs> ever since that day flashlights have been changed i wake up in the oh, middle man. of the night screaming still oh man <laughs> All right, let's see <laughs> the next one there. Uh, speaking of, what is this one's more like a like a kind of open ended one. I, I like these questions because they're fun. We get to learn some cool things. But um, what's the craziest thing that's ever been like pitched in development? Something that you're just like, what? I know you guys mentioned, you know, having rubber, the tire killer, things like that. <laughs> like, but what was the craziest uh thing that you guys? kind of heard or bounced around it depends because there's a lot of crazy stuff that gets thrown around all the mm. time like if you talk about far-fetched licenses that make no sense but could there's a million literally uh, a couple of years back i was uh i had a really glorious moment where I had a conversation with Tony Hawk about putting him in Dead by Daylight. Mm. And uh, that's literally, that's a bucket list moment. I will cherish this forever. He, he unfortunately couldn't. He's like, now my name is locked as far as video games go. It's Tony Hawk's pro skater, and that's it. I'm like, yes, mm. thank you very much, Mr. Hawk. This was lovely. Uh, but that was kind of a weird one and, and kind of an, a, a, an unexpected one that I can talk about. There's been a few others that I can't talk about. Mm. Uh, and as far as gameplay mechanics, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of immediately sent back to the original early prototype, the very, very first prototype of Dead by Daylight, which was in Unity, and it had the Unity construction guy. If, you, if you've ever played in Unity yeah. with the, so there's the, the default too. construction guy, <laughs> And then there was a big stupid monster and then you had like 20 different powers that you can use and one of them was flight <laughs> and a flying killer would be batshit insane in dead by daylight and that's something that has popped up like it it sort of comes back like gas station sushi once in a while <laughs> and then people go hey how about a flying killer and you go <laughs> no no look at every single map we've created since the beginning it would break everything it's awesome but it would break everything uh, so yeah but there are a couple of almost as crazy design ideas that i can't talk about because they're 
they're they're kind of crazy where you go it's so crazy it just might work. it might work so who knows mm-hmm. so ask like me again in, in like in 10 years when we're sort of nostalgically talking about dead by daylight that was and yeah. uh, maybe we can talk about it We'll, come right, over well to the segue barbecue. off the crazy idea that just might work uh, a couple years ago you and i we played with salmonation and chad and chad had asked you some questions while we were live streaming about the game and at the time uh, chad brought what up did I say? Uh, the <laughs> potential of seeing chucky and or the leprechaun in dead by daylight yeah. and at that time you had said that those properties would be too silly for dead by daylight it's true i said that and in the past so now that we've seen the way the devs have creatively worked around sadako and given her this unique ability to hook survivors in the way that she does do you stand by that or would you say that you know it, it's a little more flexible to possibly see a sam from trick-or-treat or a leprechaun or a chucky some of the shorter Icons of horror. Short kings. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, uh, all the short kings. I... Like, if I continue to vigorously state that they are much too silly for Dead by Daylight, wouldn't it make a much better story if we ever end up releasing them? <laughs> <laughs> I pathetically you have lies. Chucky's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not clickbait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, it is silly. They're much more on the comedic side of horror. But mm. they're, yeah, it's, you know, Chucky specifically has been on every single shortlist that we've made when we talk about horror icons since day one. I imagine he's pretty up there, yeah. 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 Maybe one Would you want to play the whole game powers. as Victor? <laughs> That's what I was thinking, is it would it feel like that? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if he had a top know. hat, I'd consider it. <laughs> <laughs> Just run around. <laughs> oh, we can man. give you a full head of hair, how about that? <laughs> 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 oh, Alrighty, let's see what we got next. Um, in last year's interview, uh, we yes. had a, a quick fire session, and we asked yes. you if we could ever see some basement changes, and you said yes. I was wondering if that still has plans. Is that something I was scrapped? I stand by that yes. Okay. Because I remember seeing I, I that in a survey. This. Yeah. yeah, I was I was thinking about this. I was like, wait, Matthew didn't mean they just added someone for like the anniversary event in there, and that was the change, and then that's it. When we had the um, the club guy in the, the basement. person under the sheet in the chair yeah. with the balloon on his finger. Yeah. I thought I was like, is, if this is the, the only change we're getting, I was like, I is that the observer? What happened? <laughs> you have to realize. In these informal, friendly chats that we have, mm. none of this can be taken as gospel, right? For sure. Uh, yeah. And 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 I'm I I I don't lie to you. I do not do that. But I may be evasive on purpose. And if I say that we've talked about something, it means we talked about something, and that's the extent mm. of what it means. Or I'm being Super coy, and it's actually an elaborate tease. We'll never know. Mm. Like the book, the books. <laughs> I remember the know. books. Oh we my won't know God. until we know. That's oh, it. the books <laughs> last then. year with the books, and for some reason you kept saying books, and I don't know if you did this intentionally or not. Maybe not. And Polly and I were like, "Why did Matthew mention so many books today?" And we immediately were like, "Surely there's a book license coming, right?" And we're like, what book license could it be? Which and I don't know if I it was co- coincidence. I, I don't know exactly what, but the topic of like, books just kept coming back. I, I don't know if you remember. Drawing, specifically the, drawing uh, licenses from other properties. And you said right. not limited to just uh, movies. 
Yeah, mm. yeah, it could be, and could we, be we from got, video yeah. games, could be from books. We, uh, like we that. got Sadako, right? Like, why do you we say got books? Sadako. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Ichi. Sadako is originally from a book. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but I but it's true, and and books are. I mean, most of those movies actually, or a lot of the movies are actually from the source material is usually a book, and if it's not, it's a it's, technically it's a script, which could be construed as a book. Uh, I I just I'm a big fan of reading. Last week, that's a little uh, that's the portion of the show where I I share a little bit about my personal life. But last week, I was delighted to uh, go pick up my sister and drive for five and a half hours to go to Shikutsumi, which is where everything began for me because that's where I'm from. It's a little town north of Montreal. Uh, because my dad was receiving uh, an award for his work at the Salon du Livre, which is what the book fair, I guess. He's been working with uh, the book fair and it's like all these or, uh, organizations to promote literacy and, and these kind of things through the Quebec, essentially, because he's been working in Quebec his whole life. And so he was getting an award for that. And it was kind of an emotional moment. And then we drove back the next day, five and a half hours to come back to Montreal. It was quite a lot of road, but it was nice to share some time with my sister. And I saw my dad being honored for making people read, which is absolutely awesome. So yay, thanks dad. <laughs> Looks so great. Starts at home. I need to read more. There you Started go. at home. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Paul, you got Matthew a book, right? For his uh Yes. Yeah. He read it like gift. so fast I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. It was such a pleasant, just chill experience to read that book. I sat on my patio in my little chair and I just enjoyed Henry Winkler talking to me nicely about what he loves in life. And it was just mm. a perfect meditation moment thank you so much for that uh, Paul, well, you're really very welcome it. it was actually a viewer of mine that recommended it to me and then uh you know pass it on to you because i thought you would enjoy it so cause, yeah because we have both had remarked at how many of henry winkler's <laughs> fishing tweets you had liked and she said i wonder if he's read um his book so and you said you hadn't so there it was but it, it's true because those pictures i mean he shares pictures of him fishing and the pure, unadulterated joy you see in his face in those pictures just made me happy. So I had to, yeah. Well, that I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, as soon as you like, you went to the um, your undisclosed location. All I thought it was like, what if he could fish there? That was all that was going through <laughs> my mind. It's like last time time the here. one walking the dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, but last time I was here, I brought in my uh, Oculus uh, Quest. And I played yeah. a fishing game, sitting in the couch next to the fire, <laughs> and that's kind of nice. So I went fishing in the cottage, but in VR. That's hilarious. Close enough. Oh, man. All right, Good I got time. one here for you. So yeah. we've seen the landscape is expanding for a lot of horror games. You know, don't take a bow or anything, but I believe it's on Dead by Daylight's <laughs> coattails that y'all have proved proof of concept that there is a market for I'll these kind it. of games and mm -hmm. uh so now my question to you is we haven't really seen much movement on ash versus evil dead or um more cosmetics for bubba does the fact that these properties now have their own licensed video games does that kind of cut off those avenues for you can you not get any more cosmetics for ash to make it more difficult or is it just the same but you just haven't had the right opportunity the answer to that is no these games have not affected negatively the liberty that we have uh they've had an impact on the converse on some conversations but it certainly has not been a negative one so, so you could get ashmore cosmetics if there was something you wanted to do okay that is correct all right fair enough That's good to know Leaves a lot of optimism for people. Uh, we spoke, mm -hmm. we kind of, we kind of went through some of these balance questions, so I won't really get too much into it. Oh, here's, here's a classic. The, the good old classic. New game mode, Matthew. You got any in store <laughs> for us? Anything coming? I mean, last year, uh, you, again, I, I watched, 
so much of last year to develop some of these questions. Uh, you guys mentioned that there's... Ask Dave. That's a question for Dave. I'm, I'm not going to answer it. Ask Dave. He's got to take okay. some of the work. I, I'm yet to meet Dave. You know, I really want to one day. I was hoping I got to in Montreal, but I think he was on vacation. I was like, damn it. Also, he just get out so much. He's a he's a family man. Mm. But uh, yeah, you should meet Dave. If anything, you should ask him if he's willing to spend 15 minutes chatting with you. Oh, I'd, I'd love, love that. to meet I'd him. Love that. He's a next really time, nice guy. Next time we're in Montreal, I'd love to meet him. For next sure. time we're okay. in Montreal. Oh man, next time we got so much plans for next time. We got invited for drinks by some of the devs. We got it was so good. Such a lovely experience. We got invited to a barbecue. Still dwelling. D D session, maybe? I don't D &D know. D D session. <laughs> we'll see. Oh man. All right, Paul. You All right, take so the next speaking one? of the yeah. devs. Why do oh, so no. many female killers <laughs> in Dead by Daylight lack shoes? And can you confirm what, how many devs have foot fetishes that work for behavior? I, I don't think we took a poll on that. <laughs> I think the Legion... Uh, the Legion, the only ones that have shoes? <laughs> like, I think Charlotte has like a half a shoe <laughs> with her toes <laughs> sticking out. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, we're keeping them all barefoot here in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> oh my God. That yeah. and the shaved heads. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, there's a thing. I, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But no, I don't think we're allowed to ask those questions to employees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like so. thing. HR has got a red yeah. light flashing on their desk. <laughs> it's not on the application. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> oh jeez. All right. Let's segue um into AOT. When when we were at Montreal, we talked a little bit about Attack on Titan and DBT, and that was when it like, boom, it hit everything and like. I mean, we've seen it on our own end. Our videos blew up. It's trending on Twitter. It's going on. It was kind huge. of a big deal. It was yeah. massive. It was huge. Um, talk me through how that happened. Like, who picked up the phone? How'd that go down? And I mean, like, what comes next after, like, the success of this? Are we going to get Scooby-Doo anytime soon coming in? You know, because... So, I, cool. I, I don't have much story to tell around the attack on titan partnership uh it was a it was a complicated one because they're they're far away and they mostly speak japanese and we don't uh but but once we we agreed we were going to do this it went really fast and it was really really cool to work with them mm. uh i'm all i can say is that this was sort of the first time we tried something of the sort, like a collaboration that's for a collection only, not for a chapter or anything like that. Right. And uh, given the success, it's probably not the last time you see something like that. And it also means that some of the other crazy ideas that someone had that went, oh, maybe that's a little too crazy. Oh yeah, like Attack on Titan was crazy? And mm -hmm. so that changed a few conversations, let's say. It's good to hear. We might get Scooby Doo after all. <laughs> One of these We're days. Scooby -Doo. Scooby -Doo. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of animals in Dead by Daylight, what did Maurice the funny. horse ever do to anybody <laughs> aside from being adorable to deserve to be treated as a snack for the dredge? And will we ever see some justice for Maurice? I hope so. That one I've said, is, uh... people say he's dead, he's gone, he's eaten. I said, hey, we know from the lore that Dead by Daylight is a multiverse. There are infinite amount of Earths that the entity infinite can draw upon. Maurice's. So not necessarily I... every Maurice has been eaten. I'm, we can I'm recover a Maurice. I, I would have to say, without throwing anybody under the bus, I was not consulted on this one. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but something needs to happen. Hmm. I think I the community would love it if there was a like, 
help us get back Maurice community <laughs> event. <laughs> then we all had to do something <laughs> to pitch in. Whatever it is, pool Drop the energy. Pallets on the do a, a, pledge, a pledge drive or something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Just uh, even yeah. in game, like if you get enough energy, we can open a portal and, brought, and then, bring more from, from and another the Earth into back into the map. You know, but I don't know. Maybe all the other Marises are living their best life and they don't want to come back to the fog, right? They know. haven't been burned up know, and man. scarred by the entity, so maybe Maurice, know, All the other Marises are living their best life. You just gave me a really stupid idea. All right, I like I like giving you stupid ideas. <laughs> Marie says on about. that mountain right now. She's yeah. like, Matthew, <laughs> get, get, really get a pen and paper. 